Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Please remember, if you wanna see my videos in writing and blog form, you can check them out at my website, www.integralclinicsolutions.com. Today, I want to dovetail off of my most recent video where I talked about prior authorizations and obtaining prior authorizations. And I wanna take it a step further to talk about tracking of prior authorizations after they've been submitted. I broke this up into two separate videos because the first one was getting a little long and I don't want to lose people's attention and this is kind of a major topic in my opinion and we're seeing more and more requirements for prior auths so I'm doing this as a separate video. Tracking prior authorizations can be super tricky and hopefully with EMRs and the advancement of technology and just the improvement of medical record systems, you will have access to a feature in whatever medical record system software that you choose in your practice to help track referrals and prior authorizations. I include referrals in here because if you have to submit for a referral for a patient, it's very similar to prior authorizations and they all need to be monitored and tracked. It's really nice if you have a feature in your medical record system where you can directly go to prior authorizations and referrals, you get alerts when things come in, you get reminders if you haven't heard anything back or closed something out. That is really the ideal way is if you have a medical record system and you're not aware if there is a way to track prior auths and referrals, I would be contacting the company and asking them if that is in there. It might maybe be something you would need to pay extra for, but if you're doing a lot of them, it'd probably be worth paying that extra amount. It could be a feature that you've just forgotten to ask about or it hasn't been relevant, and they do, but it's kind of hidden or you, you don't really know where to look, so they can guide you and point you in the right direction. My biggest tip to you is use whatever resources and automated systems you can in this process. There's so many things to keep track of in healthcare and if you can utilize a resource that will help do it for you, then by all means, go for it. The key to all of this of tracking is making sure that you have someone that keeps it in the front of their mind. It's not a forgotten thing. Like they know that, ooh, I haven't heard back from this in a while. I should probably follow up on it. They shouldn't be super reliant, even if you have automated reminders and electronic forms of tracking, it still should be in the forefront of the mind and it shouldn't be something that's an afterthought old school tracking, <laughs> I would literally have a file, a file folder on my desk and I would have them paperclip together all the information like that I would send because I'd have to fax it most likely um, or I would call over the phone and then make my notes. I would paperclip it and I would put it in a file folder and I had the same routine every week where I think it was like Wednesdays were a little bit slower and so I would that was my day to be going through and seeing if I had received any faxes in response to my prior authorizations or my referral requests. You can totally do that. Then I moved on to when we had computers more relevant or more accessible, I should say. Um, I would put reminders on my calendar. So I would put uh, what day I submitted the prior auth. I'd put like something in cryptic, not PHI, that would remind me that it's a certain patient. And I would say um, PA submitted, and then you can put like a reminder on your calendar. And I would put it out like three, four days maybe, depending on how important it was or um, how long I knew it took for certain insurances to respond. And I would put a reminder. So it would come into my calendar, my email, and say so-and-so, you know, whatever cryptic, way I identified it, need to check on prior authorization. And then I would you know, be looking in their charts to see if it came in. I'd be looking in the faxes. I'd be looking, uh, I might even make a phone call depending on how important it is or how much the doctor really wants it done. But I would track it that way. Everyone is gonna have kind of their own 
system that works best for them if you can't utilize your medical record system, but it's definitely one of those things that needs to be on a regular cadence. It needs to be something that whoever is responsible for it knows that and it's in the forefront of their mind and it's part of their routine and they're checking it regularly. There isn't an easy answer and I feel bad for that because I wish there was, but honestly, if your software has a feature that will help, it'll make a big difference because then you can put dates in there. A lot of times if it's a referral that is, um, you know, only for so many visits or something like that, you can put that many visits in your EHR and then every time that patient is scheduled, it will subtract. So it kind of does an inventory and, and notifies you when you need to renew that referral. And for the prior auth, you can put, you know, usually they're good for what, 30 days or something for imaging. So you could put like the beginning and ending date. And then if it falls outside of that, it might alert you that it's expired, etc. So utilizing the tools, finding out if you have the tools at your fingertips and you're not just aware, that's really the direction I would suggest going first. And then if that doesn't work, old school manual tracking, calendar reminders, tickler system, like file folder system, I mean, sometimes old ways are good ways. So if you have any ideas, uh, if you could share with me how people or how you and your practice are tracking referrals and prior authorizations to help your colleagues kind of get ideas and see if it will work for them in their practices, I would really much appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share this video with anybody whom you feel would benefit. Be well. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.